the vector form for an equation of a line in 2D transfers verbatim to three dimensions. As you can see in this picture, here I still have a direction vector D, and I have a base point P, uh, represented by this vector P, and together those will give me the line. And then just as with the 2D, I can expand this out in terms of components to get a parametric form. So here the only difference is that P now has three components, and so does D and so does X. So I can call this B1, B2, B3, and D, A1, A2, A3. And then my parametric form is going to be X equals A1T plus B1, Y equals A2T plus B2, and Z equals A3T plus B3. And this is my parametric form. Before I introduce the normal form and the general form for an equation of a line in R3, I want to do all the forms for a plane in R3. You'll see later why. Whereas in 2D, one normal vector specifies a line, in 3D it actually specifies a plane. So if you note here, this entire plane, all the points on this entire plane, when I look at this vector here, it's orthogonal to this vector n. So specifying one normal vector will give us an entire plane's worth of points. Just as with all the forms of the equations that involve vectors, we can expand this in terms of components to get a new form. So if I let n equal a, b, c, and if I write d equals n dotted with p, then this over here, this normal form, is going to become the general form for the equation of a, of a plane. And that's ax plus by plus cz equals b. The next form of equations for a plane in R3 is the vector form. And this guy, you can kind of see here. So here I have these two red vectors, which I'm calling the direction vectors of the plane. The idea is that every vector on this plane, when we think of them based at this base point P, can be written as a linear combination of those vectors U and V. And only the guys on this plane can be written as a linear combination of U and V when we think of the vectors as emanating from P. So writing this equation out, we get the equation, so then let's call this the vector form for the equation of a plane in R3 is x equals p, that's our base point, plus s times u plus t times v. Because remember, we're having linear combination of both u and of v. So we need two parameters. So two parameters. And then just as with the others, we can write this out to get a parametric form. So that's going to be, write it out. I don't feel like writing it out. Out in terms of components. I also want to apologize for the audio quality in this video. I've been having some audio troubles all revolving around the fact that I am in a small apartment with good but not great headphones. Yeah, sorry. So finally we get to the normal form for the equation of a line in R3. To understand where it's coming from, we want to notice that when you take the intersection of two planes like this, planes aren't parallel, 
well then they're going to intersect in a line so well we can then use together the two equations so the first the, the normal form equation for this plane and the normal form equation for this plane and then this line here is exactly the set of points which satisfy the normal form equation for this plane and the normal form equation for this plane. So the normal form for the equation of a line in 3D is actually two equations and one dotted with x minus our base point p equals zero and n2 dotted with x minus p equals zero. It's these two guys together. Then writing things out in terms of components, we get our general form of the equations of a line in 3D, which is again two equations. It's a1 x plus b1 y plus c1 z equals d1 and a2 x plus b2 y plus c2 z equals d2.